everyone, I'm Tina and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how I do crochet spring twists on my natural 4C teeny weeny afro, TWA. So I know the rubber band method is popular, but I'm not going to use that because my rubber bands kept snapping. And I'm not going to use a cornrow method because it wouldn't allow me to part my hair the way I want to. Instead, I'm going to use another method that will still allow me to achieve well blended twists that will last me the next four to five weeks. So if you're interested in seeing this, stay tuned and I hope you enjoy the video. You probably noticed that I snuck in two goddess locks. That's because I ran out of passion twist. I'll tell you what not to do at the end of this video. So this is a protective hairstyle. And because of that, I'm making sure I start on freshly washed and conditioned hair. I am running an afro pick through it to prep it for a little bit of heat. I don't usually do this, but today I am so that I stretch it out a little bit to make for optimum blending with the passion twists. Now that my hair is a little straighter than it was before, I'm ready to section it. I'm going to use a rat tail or tail comb, single prong clips to keep my hair apart, a scrunchie won't work, and a latch crochet hook, and of course the headliner, Bobby Boss New Locks. So I'm going to start by parting my hair from the nape of my neck and I parted my hair into 64 sections. I like to work from the back to the front and I always like to make sure I have a clear center part in the front. So now I have my sections and I have braided all of them. I'm going to do the last one while you see. I'm coming real close so you can see how I've done a lift, a little poof at the end, and I've made sure that they are not too tight at the base because we're gonna have the spring twist coming through. Now that all your sections are ready, it's time to grab your crochet hook and your spring twists. I did do a lot of the work off camera, but I'm coming back to show you how I did the final two. I cannot emphasize this enough. You do not want the base of your braids to be too tight because that will put too much tension on your hair. Remember, I left the end of my hair unbraided, if you remember those little poofs, so that I could sleek the end of my hair with some edge controller that way my natural hair will almost be undetectable i'm going to use lot of body 24 hour edge control and i'm going to sleek it onto the end of my natural hair Once it's sleeked on, I'm taking a spring twist and I'm going to unravel it. I usually like to look for a space in the spring twist, place my finger in that space and unravel it. It usually unravels clean. At the base of my natural hair braid, I place the crochet hook in with the latch open, hook the spring twist into the latch, close it, and pull the crochet through with the spring twist and then I make sure that I have even length on both ends back at the base I combine one side of the spring twist with my natural hair and I make sure it's tight I start to twist I make sure I twist tightly until the length of my natural hair is done. Always make sure that you haven't let your hair escape. So here we have take two. I wanna make sure that my hair is really in there with that spring twist. When I get to the end of the length of my hair, then I can ease my grip on the spring twist so that I have more of that bouncy effect. 
So as you can see, my hair is nicely concealed, well blended in there. And now that I've reached the end of the length of my hair, I'm loosening my grip. Okay, there we have it. First one down. I'm gonna do the second one again, just in case there's anything that you missed. I'm undoing the end so that I can sleep it down with the edge control, you know, so we really blend it in. We're on to the last one, and here we go again. I like to loop it over my index so that it makes it easier to place onto the latch crochet hook. Close it and pull the spring twist right through. So I'm basically doing everything I did before all over again. At the base, I'm doing that twisting motion with my fingers while I twist the spring twist. I'm gonna get to the end of the length of my hair, then I'm gonna loosen my grip. You see that? Blended, 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 okay? So I get to the end and I am done. One more thing, at the very end, I like to swirl it around my fingers so, you know, the curls can come back. I do want you to notice that some of them are going to look perfect and bouncy, like this one. And some of them are not going to be as perfect, like this one. But in my opinion, it gives the style more texture, and that's okay. And remember how I told you about those two goddess locks I snuck in? Well, I ran out. Your girl ran out, but what was I supposed to do? So, I used the goddess locks from a previous hairstyle. And now for the tip that I promised you in the beginning of this video. This is based on a mistake that I made, but I'm not gonna let you make the same mistake because I want you to get the best results from your spring twists. Okay, here it is. You want to make sure the number of sections in your hair are the same number as the spring twist that you have or else you're going to run out, which is what happened to me. I had 62 sections and only 60 spring twists and that's how I ended up using the leftover goddess box. But as you can tell, I am still super happy with how this turned out. I think it looks good and the texture conceals it very well, in my opinion. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe, and share 